Hello and welcome to a special version of KSP Plane Reviews. Kerbal Zoots Ram. Yes, I, I didn't actually say it that time. Uh, shit. I almost forgot which saved open. You might have noticed one of those saved names was Air Combat League. I'm not going to tell you what that is. You should, uh, you should figure that out yourself. I'm going to recover that to start with because I don't want it in the way. So the reason today's video is a bit different, a bit special, is because these are none of the cockpit that I am looking for. I'm looking for... The Mark II Falcon? No, I am looking for... where is it? This is it right here, the Mark 22 Raptor Cockpit. Yes, this has been a work in progress by Bahamuto, same guy who makes BD Armory and the adjustable landing gear and uh, basically all my favorite mods. He's been working on this, it has an awesome interior, I can't wait to fly it, I can't wait to fly with it. And, uh, yeah, it's a two-man fighter cockpit with a Mark II cross-section inspired by the F-22. It has built-in air intakes, a fully loaded a IVA, and a huge glass canopy. You'll be able to clearly see all around you. We just hope it can withstand the vacuum of space. Accessible through the MFDs are several external cameras. There's also the Raptor S cockpit, which I didn't know was a thing happening. I'm guessing this one is... let's see. Well, let's just go ahead and pull it out. I believe this one's supposed to work with, like... No, it's... it's it, it works in the same kind of space. Interesting. It probably has the same IVA or very similar. It just doesn't have the intakes and it's a little bit different. Oh well, I'll read that later. We're not here to review a mod. We're here to review a couple of planes. And yes, I only said a couple of planes, and that's pro. And that's that's basically because I'm just going to be so enthralled with these planes that I don't expect to really spend time doing anything else other than flying this one. I mean, there's another one too. Let me go ahead and pull it open. Yes, yeah, so we have this SU-47 Burkett. Ooh, that looks cool. That looks cool. I don't know what cockpit this is. A Cobra Mark II, apparently. This is from QuizTech Aerospace, I want to say. Cobra Mark II. It's by AOA Technologies, so not not QuizTech, but something related or similar. I don't know. See, this guy, when he sent the stuff in, he sent in stuff with mods. He didn't just send in like, a couple of planes and say, download these mods. He actually sent in, like, a whole freaking pack, so all I had to do was copy the stuff in and get going, which is nice. I love that. Thank you so much. By the way, the person who made these told me to refer to them as AS. I almost missed that part in my excitement to start playing with it and didn't read out the name. Yes, it has Z-Fighting. Yes, that annoys the hell out of me, but... I don't care right now. So this is an SU-47 Burkett. Does it have a description? No, it does not. This is the one of the things we're gonna fly. I'm actually gonna fly this first, probably. But there's also this, which I had open a moment ago, the Mark 22 Raptor, the F-22 Raptor. I believe he called it the F-22 Raptor. Hold on, let me check. Yes, the F-22 Raptor. Unfortunately, it shows up as Untitled Spacecraft. I don't know why. I think he maybe have just accidentally saved it as that and then renamed the save file. <laughs> Well, in any case, this is an F-22, the other thing's an SU-47, the F-22 is a... I don't know, I I don't have it open right now, I'm just gonna say Air Superiority Fighter. I don't know if that's true at all, I'm just making that up, but it's 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 an F-22, uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's United States, it's pretty cool. It, this looks a little bit off, I can't quite place it, I think the wings should be further up, and uh, this intake thing here on the side kind of looks weird, I don't think that should be there like that. Um, in fact, I think this whole fuselage, yeah, this fuselage, I think should definitely, like, have this bit just completely removed, I don't know. Um, it also doesn't have, uh, canards at the front. I'm probably gonna make my own F-22 kind of plane. Uh, he might have accidentally sent me the wrong thing, because the more I look at it, the more I think, this isn't really an F-22. But, in any case, this is one thing we're gonna fly, which I think I'm gonna spend the most time flying, because I'm really excited to look at the IVA for this cockpit, because I've been waiting for this mod to come out for a while. But like I said first, we're going to check out the SU-47 Burkett, and in fact, we're probably going to do some uh, combat scenarios between the two, because these two planes are the kind of planes that should be faced off against each other. They're based on planes that are essentially supposed to be faced off against each other. I think the wings are too thick. I'm not 100% sure, but I think these wings shouldn't be this thick, although um, that's really not their fault. Uh, the KSP parts, this is probably the best wing for that particular position, but it's... It's not quite right. I don't know. There was, there's, there's these swept wings, and you could put them on backwards, I suppose. But actually, that's probably how I would do it. But uh, regardless, let's go ahead and give it a fly. And here we are on the runway. It didn't have anything about action groups, but one toggles the engines, as I just found out by accident. This IV is rather sparse. I imagine you're supposed to have raster prop monitor on for those to uh, be raster propterized. But uh, he didn't include that in the packs he sent to me, and. Uh, so I assume he didn't, you know, like, care. Ooh, that took off real nice. Yes. Whoa. That thing is, uh, yeah. I'd say that's super maneuverable. That thing, uh, it did slow down quite a bit doing that. 
Okay, good. Two will engage the afterburners. That's useful. Um, I just realized because these didn't have any weapons on them, I'll have to put some on if I intend to uh, do that. Oh, that's that's a uh, intake glitched in there. Okay, I was I was looking at that going, I was looking at it from this angle, going, what is that? Yes. Oh, this thing's going fast. Yes, it is. All right, let's pull up real hard, and it's perfectly fine. Oh, we're going backwards now. Yes. Super maneuverable, definitely super maneuverable, very much so super maneuverable. In fact, we're uh, kind of coming towards the ground a bit dangerously. Come on, pick up some speed. Yeah, this thing can turn around on a dime, but it does lose all the speed and take quite a while to start picking up to a reasonable amount of speed. But that said, it controls like a dream and, well, super maneuverable. I already said that part, but yes, super maneuverable means you can do stupid things. Although, right now, I'm more interested in speed, so let's let's go faster. Come on, come on, go faster. And let's see, it's using, yes, adjustable landing gear. Uh, oh, God, I'm sorry. I understand the Z fighting is basically because you're placing parts exactly in a line. And if it was me, I'd say move one of them up or down just ever so slightly using the offset tools to make this kind of Z fighting go away. You can make it go away, or at least mostly go away while you're flying. I'd put this wing slightly above the other one so that, for instance, when you pull and there's a lot of force on it, it sticks above the other thing because there is some flexibility in parts. And so you do have to watch out for that. But if you just make it slightly above, that would work. If you make these slightly above or below, if you just, you know, offset things very, very slightly, that'll work. And then this, this landing gear, the, come on, man, that could have been rotated a little bit very easily. It wouldn't, you could very easily make it look better than that. Just saying. Anyhow, overall, though, I'm, I'm, I'm a little biased in this because I'm really happy that you sent this stuff in simply because I didn't realize the Mark 22 uh, cockpit was out yet. And I am so excited to fly it. I'm sorry, I'm being distracted by that. That's why this video is really just going to be these two planes by this one person and just kind of looking, almost looking more at that cockpit than the planes. But uh, yes, here we are, the SU-47. It flies quite fast. It is super maneuverable. I'd say uh, it's a pretty good job. Like I said, it's not, it's not the best replica, but I think it's pretty good. And uh, it flies well, that much is for certain. Definitely... Um, has the control authority to get the job done. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up really hard and just turn around. <laughs> and uh, as soon as this thing's done turning around, we're gonna go ahead and switch to the F-22 to take a look at that. Okay, so the F-22, like I said, it's not quite an F-22. It doesn't quite look right, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a fly anyhow. We're gonna take a look at what it looks like from the cockpit. There's clippiness here that annoys me, not to mention the Z fighting, but whatever. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to fly it the way I normally would doing any plane reviews and just uh, fly it around from the external view. Oh yes, that takes, off, that takes off way too quick. Also, I have a feeling those landing gear stick out too far, but whatever. That's, that's, that's irrelevant, really. I'm just going to go ahead and fly this, and it's probably super maneuverable. Yeah, I'd say that's super maneuverable. In fact, I'd say that's probably a little more maneuverable than the other one. Probably also has a better thrust-to-weight ratio, although I'm not sure about that. I could definitely check if I remembered that I had this uh, Kerbal Engineer installed, which is different from how I'm used to seeing things, and I don't know how all the buttons work, because they've updated a lot, and I haven't paid attention to it at all. I haven't been using it at all, really, but that's beside the fact that we are now going to aim at the ground. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's go like this, and pull up. And pull up more. Oh, shit. I should have pulled up uh, a bit quicker than that. And wait, we survived that. Well, I guess this is as good a time as any to take a look at the fact that the cockpit is empty. So yeah, I'm guessing I'm guessing now that raster prop monitor is not required. However, uh, if you want any any of the cool stuff that I was looking forward to taking a look at, you do need it. So I'm actually going to go away and restart the game now. Yes. So as I had feared and really should have known better, but was trying to hope against all hope that was not true. I needed raster prop monitor and asset prop pack. So first I'm going to refly this one because I know its IVA will be different as well. Yes, so we have some MFDs on here with uh, Junk Systems ink on them ready to go. We got, oh, is this like a custom? Well, that's interesting. We got like a custom uh, panel there. I'm going to go ahead and activate the engines, activate the afterburners. Do we have SAS on? Yes, we do. And I'm going to pull up gently. Well, not terribly gently, but fairly. Is this thing pulling up on its own? Oh, I've disabled it. What? How come the SAS light went on when I turned off SAS? 
that's that's a weird bug. Well, in any case, the SU-47. So, while I'm staring very, very closely at now, you can see it's a texture. <laughs> uh, that's that's interesting. Um, yes, the SU-47 Burkitt. The NATO reporting name is Firkin. Interesting. Also designated the SU-32 and the SU-37, not to be confused with the twin-engine Delta Canard design offered by the Sukhoi in the early 1990s under the designation SU-37. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't there already an SU-37? During initial development, uh, let's see, it was an experimental supersonic jet fighter, and a distinguishing feature of it is the forward swept wings, which, oh god, I'm falling lower than I thought I was. I'm going pretty slow right now, aren't I? Is there a thing here that says actual speed? There's an altitude, ASL is um, above sea level, and terrain, well, T-E-R is above terrain, so you can see I believe that's correct. Of course, the uh, ASL level... Oh, that's interesting. Oh, the terrain level is not changing at all. Or it's changing very slowly. Okay, maybe that's something else. I thought TER was above terrain, but it's obviously not because we're going much higher and that's not what's happening. Uh, we can see the pressure and the atmosphere percentage. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by that because... Oh, there's speed. Yes. Air speed, speed, horizontal speed throttle. Oh yes, I forgot to actually turn the engines up to full throttle, so that would explain why uh, the performance on this thing wasn't as good as I expected it to be. Anyhow, where was I? So, yes, it was an experimental supersonic jet fighter. The distinguishing feature of it is the forward swept wings, which are thinner than this plane's version. I'm now looking at a picture of it, so I can say, yes, I was right. The wings should have been thinner, but oh well. And it has excellent agility and maneuverability. And let's see, blah, blah, blah. The sole aircraft produced served as a technology demonstrator prototype for a number of advanced technologies later used in 4.5 generation fighters, such as the SU 35BM and the current fifth generation jet fighter prototype known as the Pak Fa T 50, which, if I remember correctly, looks like it was stolen from an SU 30, uh, not an SU 35, no, an F 35, or at least it's, uh, it definitely has similar characteristics to an F 35. I'd have to take a look at another picture again because I don't remember exactly how the uh, how they looked um, I do notice as I'm flying it right now from in the cockpit that um, because of the super maneuverability and aerodynamics you can end up like pulling up a bit too hard and then not being able to quite control yourself as easily as you'd like to and that's definitely something that uh, takes a little getting used to whoa whoa especially when it does something like that yeah see it kind of tilted sideways in a weird sort of way let's see Oh yes, I already looked at what those mean. Oh cool, oh cool, it tells you your trim percentages, that's useful. And then of course we have the MFDs, which can give us interesting things. Oh wow, cool, like a graph over time of, of things. We have this kind of nav ball, so we can have, you know, two different nav balls if we want. Um, there's also, oops, come on, target management and autopilot control. Well, I don't have the mech jab installed, so that obviously isn't there. We also have vessel view, if I had vessel viewer installed. Engine igniter. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what DPAI is. There's satellite something, orbital info or whatever, targets. Whoa, come on. Burkitt info. Oh, cool! Look at that! Tells us who's flying and everything. And temper temperature. Interesting. Uh, scientist, Bob Kerman, pilot Valentina. Oh, we have two people on board. Oh, yes! Wait, wait, yes? So there's someone else in this cockpit? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being distracted by this stuff in here. Oh, come on. And uh, X cam 1, which doesn't have anything in it. And neither does any other camera on it. But we can put other things on the other monitors if we wanted to. And see? No, that's outside of the cockpit. Yes, there is another person in here. Oh, I can see out the sides pretty well. Just uh, not out the front very well. So this is the interesting way to fly it, right? Oh my god, especially because I just completely spun us out. We're actually flying backwards now. Um, oh, yeah, there's a nav ball. So you can see we're actually... Uh, we're actually dropping like a stone quite badly. Hold on. Uh, let me go ahead and get us a nav ball on here. Oh, that was the wrong... Is this... Which one was it? I thought it was this... Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Yes. Let's let's move on to the other thing. I mean, if you've seen Raster Prop Monitor before, you kind of already have seen that. If not, though, uh, you should definitely should check it out because Raster Prop Monitor is pretty awesome, especially if you like flying things from IVA. So, now we're back at the so-called F... 22, which is supposed to be a single-seat twin-engine all-weather stealth tactical fighter aircraft developed for the United States Air Force. We have the master alarm on. I don't remember how to turn this stuff on. Is it this? 
Oh, I hope that was what I wanted. Oh, yep, it's booting up. HUD power on. All right. Oh. Yeah. Did I forget to enable SAS? Oh, okay, the SAS button takes a while to turn on. Yeah, and as you can hear, it's calling out the uh, altitude as we get higher. Oh, this is interesting. So, we have various buttons. I don't know what these do. I'm... I'm kind of... I'm kind of scared to uh, hit all these. 2000. 2000, that's nice. Oh, this is, it says GPS speaker power. So this would be radio stuff. That's interesting. Um, do any of these do anything? I don't know. Oh, this, I could be wrong, but that turns on RCS. I mean, it says uh, OMS. No, okay, uh, oxygen. Emergency flow, engine flame out, landing gear. If I hit gear, oh, yep, you can see there's two gear buttons. Oh my god, this is so cool. 100% throttle, so if I turn it down, you can see the throttle changes. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to turn that down just a bit. We have, we have staging. Oh, we have, oh, that's cool. Let's, uh, we can turn on brakes or not. Does this thing have air brakes? I'm curious. No, it doesn't look like it does. Okay, let's go back in here. We can lock the staging so that we don't accidentally uh, activate staging. And uh, there's actually a little staging button. That's so cool. Oh, we can see the fuel percentage in the current stage there. Yep. Oh, and yes, we have interior lights. Oh, cool. So we have... Uh, oh my god! It's got the flag that I used, and it's got the name of the flag, and then it has flight... Oh, that is so cool! That is amazing. I'm sorry. This is not really a plane reviews. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that when I put the video, I'm gonna title that it's it's more of a oh my god, look at this amazing stuff than a plane reviews. But you know, that's my excuse. What's this do? Oh yeah, that turns everything off. Um, well not everything. I guess that just turns off the um the HUD up top. Turns that on and off. Uh, we can turn on the lights. Turn on the RCS. That's interesting. The lights doesn't show that they're on or off, but the RCS does. Whoa. We can tell it to aim at prograde. We can tell it to aim at retrograde, which is a bad idea right now. We can tell it to, uh, I think, oh, oh, fuck, nope, that's not what I want to do. Uh, now we're stalling. Oh, fuck. Okay, oh, stab, down here, stability, okay, yeah. That's interesting. I made us. Uh, oh, we're stalling. Ah, that is so cool, though. Oh, it. it oh yeah, because it warns about stalling and it also warns about side slipping. Um, let's go ahead and throttle up to full, because we're gonna need it to get out of this. So it tells you about when you're having high Q, which I don't actually know what that is. There's also a high G warning. What was that? Ten thousand? Oh yeah, we are falling quite a bit, so that would be um that would be correct. Um, I'm actually in quite a horrible stall right now. I'm surprised I'm in a stall that this thing isn't really able to recover from, at least not with the afterburners on. With the afterburners on though, oh, whoa, shit. That is quite bad. Okay, let's, oh no, are we in a, we're now stalling in a completely different orientation and this is not going well. Okay, come on, come on, there we go. We've regained some control. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's pull out of it very gently. Yeah. There's a weird glitch of, like, a bright light on the screen there. Okay, high Gs, and we've recovered. Okay. Wow, yeah. So we got an atmosphere gauge, so we can see when we're uh, in thicker or lighter atmosphere. Very nice. Dynamic pressure, G-forces, Mach number, vertical speed, surface speed, altitude warning. Oh! What is... What do those do? Alright, so we, we've set it to 300 now. I don't know what that does, but we're gonna we're setting it to 300. I'm gonna go ahead and pull around like this. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, I made it do a little eh when I, uh, when I pulled up. I don't know if that was from pulling up high Gs. Yep, oh, that was the stall warning, okay. Oh, geez, that's not good. Okay, okay, come on. Okay. Wow, this thing, uh, you do not want to... 
You do not want to lose control with this thing, because that, that would go badly. I'm really curious to know what the difference is on these altitude warnings. That is... I don't know what that does, but it's interesting. And then, of course, we have the... Uh, we have... What is this? Six of these? Yeah, we have six of these raster prop monitors on here. We got a low charge and engine overheat warnings. We got stage... Oh, that's like another stage fuel remaining, I'm guessing, or stage electric charge. I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, that's the SAS controls, and we have a survival gear down here. We got an abort button. Let's see what happens when we click it. <laughs> that's cool. Can we can we close that back? Oh, let's turn that back off. Okay, yeah, let's turn that off. Yes, yeah, so we have the various. We have the various. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. We can. What does this do? Apparently not. Oh. So we can take a look at the total time versus our current mission time. Oh, what? I don't know what that is. That is... I don't know what I'm doing. Nan? I don't know what those various things were, but that is interesting. And then we have... Caution, do not open in mid-flight. Oh, I can't open it in... Oh! 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 You can't open it in mid-flight. <laughs> oh, man. That is not good. All right, reverting to the runway, we're just gonna take another look at this stuff. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Does that turn on the cockpit lights? No, it doesn't. I wish it would give me an indication as to whether it's off or on, but that's beside the point. All right, so we have liquid fuel, oxidizer, and monoprompt. Monoprompt. It tells us, I'm guessing time remaining, it tells us how much is on the stage, how much is on the total. Can you stop putting your hand in my freaking face. I love how when you turn though, like the, the camera is actually moving off center instead of trying to stay center. That is very, very useful. I like that very much. I believe I have SAS engaged. No, I don't. Okay, I know I have the brakes engaged. All right, now I've disabled them and let's go ahead and pull up gently. That is so cool, with it reading stuff out. Alright, what are these? What do they say? Uh, low data rate, high data rate, something control command, untitled spacecraft data processing system. I'm imagining that's stuff I'm supposed to see from her point of view? I don't know, it's, it's really hard to see and it's upside down. Well, I guess I'll just read it upside down then. Uh, we got a GPC-1, 2, 3, 4, SISTI, MDMs, and temperature, and... ICDB uplink enabled, some other things, bus A where our power is nominal, the AC bus is good, charge is 100.2, I'm guessing if that's literally our charge, yeah, it pretty much is, alright, we have IPL source 1, DK bus, IP, IDP, excuse me, uh, mech, main engine count 1, uh, mission elapsed time, Autopilot unit not installed. I wonder if the autopilot unit there mentioned is just the mech jab or if it's also if it would recognize BD Armory's AI. I, I really don't know. But in any case, we're going to take a look at the back seat, which is awesome. Yeah, so I read the little description about this thing real quick. Also, look, we have a little fan in here. That's cool. What does it say? Portable breathing apparatus. That would be useful. We have a landing gear warning. We have engine overheat, engine flame out, cabin overheat, high Q. I guess high Q might be side slip. I'm not sure. Um, these, I'm guessing, are RCS controls. I. Do they only work if you're in docking mode? Let's let's switch to docking mode real fast and see if. Oh, yep. I mean, I can't use them on the with the mouse, but they're. They're definitely like they're those controls. That is so cool. Yeah. So this the back seat is designed for docking. I'm guessing this says approach speed or like target speed or whatever. We have a monoprop, monoprop uh, amount. We have another abort button, of course. We have internal temperature, humidity, and pressure. We have those uh, flame out warnings and whatnot. We have oh hey look this is that same thing again. That tells us some statuses and whatnot. We have another fan back here. We have this blue box. I don't know what it's for. I I don't know what it's for. I'm guessing it's there to look cool. 
stage, lock stages, we have the interior lights, of course. We have whether the instruments are on or off. Oh, did I just turn them on back here? Because they were off, or what? Well, let me click that again. Oh, that that turns off the lights. That's that's interesting. Okay, so we have the standard little thing telling us about our uh, thrust weight ratio and all that stuff. We have oh action groups. These are action groups. So I've just turned off the engines and back on. I've turned on the afterburners. They're called C up front, but they're called A G back here. <laughs> you know, just to uh, increase our understanding. This is of course how you can change the uh, SAS stuff. So I disabled it for a moment. This is stability assist. I could change it to these other ones. I'm not going to do that right now because I know better than to do that. We also have an RCS toggle. We have a lock unlock button, which does nothing. Yeah, it definitely does nothing. Um, more fuel info. We have oh another one of those little... It's like stuck on. That's cool. Got charge, consumption, and flow. Oh, that's cool to keep track of battery back here. That's cool. Yeah, so this person is definitely docking or weapons manager, I guess, if you're in a firing situation, if you're in a fighter jet situation. And the uh, front guy is the pilot slash weapons, although technically in this case, uh, Valentina's in the back and she's the pilot and Bob's in the front and he's not a pilot. But uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. What I am going to worry about if, is the fact that this thing will probably not like what I'm about to do to it. Yep, stalling, stalling. Uh, are we just going to fall again? Nope, I got it. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, just gently pull. Gently pull. We probably have we have a lot of side slip when we're doing that. Oh no, now we've now we've lost it. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, you can do it. There we go. Okay. Regain control. Um when I do this, it doesn't warn me about a lot of slip. Oh, it does when I do that. The high Q doesn't go off though, so I don't I don't know what that is. I thought it might be something to do with that, but obviously it's not since it doesn't go off when I do that. Oh jeez. I've just stalled it horribly going this way. Now we're stalling and slipping and falling out of the sky. Yeah, so unfortunately I have to say your design has a tendency to lose control quite badly, which is not a good thing, obviously. Not a good thing. And I'm gonna go out here so I can uh, see the nap ball better. Although, really, I could have just uh, pulled up a nav ball on an MFD here. And... Yep, yep, I know. We're going down quite fast. Oh, fuck. Okay, okay. Full throttle to try and regain control. And... Alright, let's get a MFD on here. Okay, we're still massively stalling, but we're regaining control. Okay, let's turn that off. And let's try and very, very gently pull it around. Let's actually disable SAS right now. Oh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. That was very much a mistake. Okay. Full throttle, two. I actually hit three. I don't know what that does, but it made a beep. Okay. Okay. Let's cut that. Okay. Pull up gently, gently, gently. Yeah, so this thing, uh, unfortunately, your plane design does have a tendency to flip out and try to kill me. <laughs> But this cockpit is amazing, and I can't wait to make an F-22 with it. So, I will be doing that. Anyhow, thanks for watching this not-quite-a-normal-plane-reviews video, but still sort of... I'm going to pretend it was plane reviews, even though it clearly wasn't. I don't know where I am. I think the KSC is back, yeah, back that way. It's like way back over there, isn't it? Yeah, I can see the buildings. So, uh, too bad. We're, we're not going there. Oops, I hit the wrong button. I wanted to recenter the camera. Anyhow, yes, thanks for watching, and tell me what this does, because I don't know what the alt warning switch does. I I really don't get what that's what the difference is. I mean, it's doing something. Of that, I'm sure. Anyhow, I'm not sure if I already said it. If I didn't, see you in space. I'm going to go try to land this thing.
Twenty-five. 